Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. I think you guys just got to see my forehead because I had my camera switched around. Hopefully, that's all you got to see, because I'm, but I'm not in my pajamas or anything like that. Anyway, to, in today's video, I'm going to share 21 projects I created using the Beyond the Horizon Paper Pumpkin Kit, which is the March Paper Pumpkin Kit by Stampin' Up. But first, I got this in the mail. I need to tape it so I don't get to, uh, tempted to uh, open it. I'm not allowed to open this yet. So this just came in the mail. This is the new annual catalog and I'm attending an event on Tuesday. Well, actually the events. Yeah, I'm attending the event. It's not the same time for everybody, but I'm attending an event where they sent me a free stamp set. Well, it wasn't really free. It's part, part of my event registration called on tour. So have I already played with this? Yes, I just got it and I've already played with it. It's called Good Feelings. It's one of the new stamp sets that's gonna be in this annual catalog. And I'm working on this sunshine, boxes of sunshine, using the mini paper pumpkin boxes that are retiring soon. So I just wanted to just show you the cover and this will be for, live for customers on May 3rd. All right, so say hello when you come in. Let's just jump right into it. So when I get a paper pumpkin kit, what I do, I get two of them. Just, just kind of telling you what's going on today. I do this every month. This is kind of my what I do. So I always order two of these because I like to make sure because in case we run out. Now only paper pumpkin subscribers are able to get refills. But I just like to subscribe to two kits. The first kit I open up and I want to see how much I can make with it. I get my crafty mojo by opening up these kits. They're a surprise each month. I never know what I'm going to create. I never know what the kit is going to look like. They do not tell us. They don't tell the demonstrators. They don't tell anybody. So the first thing I do is I turn it over and I say, oh, okay, look at the contents of the kit and look at the coordinating colors. So I look at those and I, I'm going to just tell you what they are so you can see which ones I used on the projects. Bumblebee, Calypso Coral, right? These are the colors down here. It's on the back of the instructions. Evening Evergreen, Misty Moonlight, Kind of sad this color's retiring May 2nd. That's a really cool color. Uh, let's see, where was it? Let's not digress. Mr. Mule Knight of Navy, Old Olive, and Pale Papaya. Now keep in mind that every paper pumpkin kit comes with everything you need, and you're, you're going to have a stamping spot in there to do all of your work. However, the stamping spot is one color. It's this color, the Misty Moonlight. Instead of, instead of taking out my stamping spot and using it, I prefer to use the larger stamp pad. And I will show you what a stamping spot looks like, but right now my box is pretty full. So then what I do is I open up and I just, I, you know, while I'm watching TV, I punch out all the pieces. I don't have any idea what I'm going to make yet. I pretty much never make what's in the instructions, but I, I'll show you. I kind of do. I mean, I make maybe one of each of these. And then I just do my own thing. And it doesn't really, it's not a plan. It just comes to me as I'm doing it. There are instructions to follow along, and if you get the kits, this kit in particular has nine beautiful cards, and if you just do that, you're going to have a great time crafting, being creative, maybe put a little spin on it, maybe maybe not, it doesn't matter. If you just want to get creative and get your crafty mojo going every month, just get the kit and make these as is, and your friends will be very, very pleased when you send them these cards. However, I like to just do all kinds of other stuff, so we'll probably make something you know, we'll probably, I don't know what we'll make yet. We'll let you guys vote on what you want to see me make. All right, so I have here, what I'm going to show you first are these, these little things. They are called match, match books. Maybe we'll make these, maybe we'll make a box, maybe we'll make the sour cream containers. Who knows? Just let you guys vote on what you want to see made. So these, these are called match books because they look like, you know, you go to a little bar and you have a match book. But what you can put inside is either a Ghirardelli chocolate or a tea bag. So, so it fits it. It's the same size, same measurements. And I thought these would lend themselves really well to this because the cut, the cards were already printed on there. So we have chai tea. So that's like the little, what's this one? Uh, just a, just an orangey color. It just matched. And then we have the green tea, the Zen green tea. I like this brand of tea because they, they're individually wrapped tea bags. So I did the two with the thinking of you theme. And when I stapled, I wanted to hide my staples this time, and I usually don't, but I hit, I hit them with a little extra strip of designer series paper. I stamped right onto these two. So you could see that one is using the pattern on the back, and then I stamped right onto the front of these. 
Yeah, you know what, Yvonne? The um, paper pumpkins were really late this month going out. If that's not the reason I'm doing mine late. It's just that I finally got to it. I have a lot of other things going on, but um, they are, they got they had a delay with the shipping, and they were very late. So then these two have Ghirardelli chocolates. So it's the same size measurement. So you have to put that little extra. This one just bold just a little bit more, but it's the same size measurement whether you put a Ghirardelli chocolate in there, and you could decorate the inside too, or whether you put a little tea bag in there. And I do I do adhere these to the back a little bit with a with a dimensional so that the chocolate doesn't fall out. You just try to get a Ghirardelli chocolate square or something that's going to, you know, not not fall out. Okay, so those are fun. So we will either we'll either make these, I'll let you vote later. We'll make those or these sour cream containers I made. And then our actual sour cream. They're um they're the sh shape of a sour cream container. All right, so now I just want to tell you a little, this inside air kit, we get a little sneak peek of the next kit, but this is all we know about the, the what month is it? April, okay, the April kit, it says change is beautiful, okay? So this is, all we know is it's going to have to do with butterflies. So, and it's it's a card kit. Now, that that's coming up. So if you subscribe using my link, go to my, go to my website, this is my Stampin' Up! store, and on the bottom of the page, you can subscribe to my newsletter. And then it also it says subscribe to Paper Pumpkin by the 10th of the month and you'll get this kit. You'll also get on my list for annual catalogs. I've already done the annual catalog mailing and I spent a pretty penny on that. So those will be coming out in the middle of the month. But I'm not doing catalog requests right now for annual catalogs. But because I've already done this thing called a catalog mailing selector. But all my new Paper Pumpkin customers will automatically get an annual catalog. All right. So in this month, back to March, this that's April. That's your sneak peek of April. Now, and you can subscribe or, or cancel any time. In this kit, we got a free gift. I have not played with my free gift yet. Everything I'm going to show you is what came with the regular Paper Pumpkin. So every March, we have an anniversary of Paper Pumpkin. And they give us a free extra stamp set or, or colored pencils or something fun. And like I said, I haven't played with this yet. But that, that's what I got in this kit, this extra stamp set. But I played with the stamp set that came with the Paper Pumpkin, and that was the bonus. This one was the bonus stamp set. So everything I did was with the actual stamp set. Usually you don't get two stamp sets. It's just because it was March. This month I got this one stamp set and then the bonus. Everything I made was with the one that came with the kit. I didn't play with the bonus because I was trying to see what I could make with the actual kit. So with that in mind, every sentiment I'm going to show you is from the stamp set. This little stamp set here. And the first card is, I, I've showed you these four projects. So this is project number five and it, it is a card. I'm using a misty moonlight background, a retiring color. I cut apart the inside of the envelopes. And you're going to see how I use this little pieces of the inside of the envelopes all over the place. And I will open a full paper pumpkin kit for you. This is not something I made separately. This came in the kit. What I love about this is I didn't have to do any extra die cutting. That alone and, and the amount of time I spend die cutting is really, really amazing. And so that alone is like a reason to subscribe to paper pumpkin, getting all those extra embellishments and die cuts. So every little embellishment here was with the kit. Okay, and then I just did it plain inside and a crumb cake. It's just a plain card inside and a crumb cake background. Okay, so the crumb cake meaning a crumb cake card base. So you could take the card bases. Let me try to start with one that is a card base that came in the kit. Here, let me show you a few of those kind of cards first. So without putting them like this, you can't see this right now. You can't feel the weight of this. When I do my own card stock, I'm making a much more professional, highly weighted, heavy cardstock card using just the elements from the kit. So all I had to do is use some of my own cardstock. If you want, though, this is just coming straight out of the kit. I didn't use anything extra. So this is pretty good cardstock, but I'm just telling you, I'm keeping it real. It's not as good as stamping up cardstock. This card weighs a lot more. Okay, so that's um, that's that's what you can see with this. Just you can feel it and know that it's doesn't weigh as much. Now this background, it, it this is called Beyond the Horizon kit because it goes it goes really well with the, the New Horizons designer series paper. So for just to explain this card, I stamped a little bit using this cool stamp here with pale papaya. I used this on the edges of my sentiments. I did congratulations with Calypso Coral ink, okay? And then I just cut a little pieces of the envelope off and a little piece of pale papaya. And that's how I did this one. And now just so just to show you these envelope liners. 
You can see how I use these all over in many of the different projects, these envelopes and envelope liners. All right, so another card that just straight out of the kit, you can make straight out of the kit. You have these two different types of mountains they give you, and you can layer the mountains on top of each other. Little piece of ribbon, this pale papaya ribbon, and extra little bling bling and all that. Just I, All I did here was use Misty Moonlight, the color that came. Oh, here you go. Here's the stamping spot. I found that it was in my box. I didn't open it yet because I usually put these in, as prizes and things. I've already used every shred of the ribbon, but there was a whole, there was like a roll of pale papaya ribbon in there and there was bling bling but I used up all the bling except for maybe one or two anyway so that's how I did this one I just inked around the edges with pale papaya and there's a really cool envelope and you're going to see this envelope used a lot more as well as you could see how I use these envelope liners for a lot of things so that's how I struck that's how I got 21 projects out of one kit by just taking these envelopes and I you know I have three envelopes left because all the envelopes I cut them apart and used them on my cards because I usually put other I, I usually when I when I send my crafty friends like a thank you for an order or something I give them a card and then I put that in a bigger envelope so that's why I do love these envelopes but I do have an extra kit too so I can use the envelopes in there anyway pale papaya uh, this one is this one's a little piece of extra card stock an extra card front this piece here stamped congratulations on there with again clips of coral and pale papaya and these little elements here, and there's the envelope liner. So what I showed you there were the ones you can make straight out of the kit. Here's another one you can make straight out of the kit. Not doing anything extra, just I'm just stamping onto the envelope pieces as opposed to the pieces that came with it. So this is not anything extra, just stamping Misty Moonlight on there. Thank you, Darlene, I'm glad you like my cards, or love, I should say love. Now this one I did go a little bit further than out of the box because in the, in the kit, you just have this kind of card. That's, it gives you this really cool background, but I took that little leaf here, this leaf here, and I used and I stamped it with, see I have all my colors here to, to help show you, so it's just easier to show you, old olive. And so what I did is I, I did what's called off stamping, so I stamped on, off, on, off. So I would ink up the stamp, stamp on, then stamp off, stamp on, stamp off. Hey, it sounded like the Karate Kid, wax on, wax off, stamp on, stamp off. And that's how I got that effect around the edges. So I made an extra little border there. And then all the, I also took the embossed piece that came in the kit, and I took it and I put pale papaya on it with a, with a blending brush. Okay, so that's what I did. That's how I got that one. And a little note I stamped in old olive, and then I used pieces of the envelope. I originally was going to make some Hershey nugget treats, but I didn't do it this time. I had all these little pieces cut to, to wrap the nuggets. And then, you know what? I was like, you know what? I'm going to do other things with it. So I used all the little pieces instead as part of my little layers behind for my sentiments and things. That's what I ended up using with all my... So you're going to see these little one-inch shaped pieces all over the place that were actually my nugget wrappers. So again, this card is right out of the kit, right? It's, and then this card is, is heavier because it's old olive with a lining. It's an old olive card base with an extra layer of misty moonlight with an extra little speckled layer of misty moonlight from the envelope. Okay, this is the envelope liner. Just explaining how I did all this. So feel free to case any of the projects, meaning copy and share everything. Like share, copy the projects if you want. Make your own. I hope these inspire you to do other things with your kit. This I didn't have to ink up. It looks like I did, but this is a piece of an envelope again. And then just an extra little piece of the envelope liner there with one of the extra embellishments. Notice I'm putting odd numbers of embellishments. So I did, I did it in threes, just odd numbers. I love this piece here. It just reminds me of like a wall, a home decor. I put an extra little mountain on there. Now this one, for this card, I made my own background. I took this, these two stamps. You already know how I use the one stamp. No, it's already buried. So this stamp here, I used it again, you know, stamping it five times. And then I took the pale papaya and stamped this pattern five times, turned it, turned it horizontally. I originally was going to do a vertical card. But then I thought it looks better horizontal. I put a mountain there. I put, so I put this piece of the envelope liner. That's where it gets that curve. See the little curve from the envelope liner. And then I just took extra little scraps I had and just this little thing and did a congratulations card. So that's that card. And see if sometimes, yeah, I didn't put anything in the inside of every card. I'm going to be putting, like, they're going to be mostly blank inside. Okay, and then we have hello. This is this is an embossed background. 
So this is the evening evergreen color for this background. So what I did is I took a piece of evening evergreen cardstock and I embossed it using this te Tasteful Textiles 3D, maybe it's a 3D, either way it's called Textile Embossing Folder. So it has textile in the name. So I hope you can see that I'm just kind of changing the angle. This is a retiring embossing folder. So if you like that look of just taking your paper and making sure your paper has some texture to it, then, then that's what you're going, you know, that's what you can do. You can emboss it. So yeah, so Yvonne's saying she really likes the colors. Yeah, the envelopes are the best. The envelopes are awesome because you could do so much. Like whether you use these as envelopes or not, you have all these creative possibilities. Basically, when you get envelopes this cool, you have all this designer series paper, and look, it, it's printed all the way through. So I agree with you. I agree with you, Yvonne. Look, so you could do so much with that. And I didn't know what I was going to do yet until I opened up the kit. Like I said, I just love opening up these kits because I just go, oh, I could put it like this and that and this and that. And I just start adding extra layers, and it just adds a lot more to your card. So hello is in Misty Moonlight there. And then this one is a bunch of layers. This was all my scraps. <laughs> this is probably one of the last cards I made because I used the envelope liner for the background. A piece of old olive, but then it was too much old olive, so I broke it up with the Misty Moonlight in between the layers. And then extra little layers of envelope lining, uh, embellishments. And then for this one, I used a punch. Now this is not a punch. This, is this, this shape here is what came in the kit. This is a punch. So let me grab that. And I believe this is carrying over into the next catalog. It's called the Double Oval Punch. It's a pretty cool punch. I usually label my punches. I didn't get to label this one. However, the bookmarks that I made... I created using this punch and it is retiring and it's half price. It was half price as of the other day. I hope it's still available. This is 1150. It's a very heavy duty punch and it's going to be used for the next projects I'm going to show you right now. And I'm going to show you my bookmarks. I made two of those. I like making tag treats and bookmarks using my pieces from the kits because it just takes your kits and gives them gives you other ID, you know, other purposes besides cards. Like I said, if I'm going to make cards out of the kits, I prefer making thicker cards with extra layers. I do make some cards just as they are with the kit because, like, for example, I have, I have a new Paper Pumpkin subscriber. Her name's Diane, and I want to send her one that I made from the kit itself. So that way, if she gets the refill, of, she'll, she'll, get, she'll be able to make, like, the cards that I'm, sh that I'm sharing with her. And so a lot of times my new Paper Pumpkin subscri subscribers are new, to Stampin' Up! and I want to make sure I give them cards that are without a lot of extra products. But I know some of you watching have a lot of extra products and you can take your cards to the next level. So what I did for these is I used Knight of Navy. That's another one of the coordinating colors. That's this, car, you know, Knight of Navy is a really nice... Nope, actually that was Misty Moonlight. Sorry, that was Misty Moonlight. Yep, that's Misty Moonlight. And I took Misty Moonlight cardstock and I just layered them up with some embellishments and I used Pale Papaya that little shape there for stamping on the inside of Misty Moonlight for the in, for the sentiments. Okay, and then we have Thinking of You. I think I showed you. I showed you that one already. This one, this one, yeah, I wanted to show you the inside of this one. So for this card, I decided instead of putting white on the inside, I said, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be neat instead of putting, like I always have a lot of these cut up. These are my basic white card stock. I was like, instead of putting basic white on the inside, what if I put the card, the envelope liner on the inside? I had a couple of envelope liners left, and I decided to make the inside like that, and I think that looks really cool. So I might be doing that with my next batch when I open up my next kit. So this is just, again, just the envelope liner, extra pieces. Um, this one I inked up with my sponge, I think, or else it's a piece of the envelope. And then this one I definitely inked up with the pale papaya here and here with the blending brush. And this one I used what's called the hive, the Hive 3D embossing folder. It's a new embossing folder, and it's in a, it's in our mini catalog. Thank you, Sue. And it's it's part of our mini catalog, and it's, and I used it in. I did it debossed this time, so it looks more like a beehive. But in the past, I've used it to look like water with my otters, with the amazing otters or awesome otters, I should say. And I, when you turn this embossing folder over, it looks like water, because it looks like puff up. But when you turn it upside down, it kind of looks like little hexagons. So it makes a really cool background. Again, I'm bummed that color is retiring. So those are the cards, and then I have a few more projects to show you. These are what's called the sour cream containers. So I'm going to have you vote on which 3D project to make. We're not making it. Well, well, instead of making a card, we'll just have you vote on which three, 3D. So do you want to make match, match books? 
like match, like strike a match, matchbook, sour cream. I'll just look at the first few votes and we'll do a tiebreaker. We'll see what the first, and then um, sour cream, or sour cream container or a box. And I think we made a box last time. This is the box. Okay, so that's, so whatever you vote on, we'll make it the best out of three, first three votes. Oh, it looks like we already got matchbooks as a vote. First vote, we'll see who, okay, I'm going to say hi to you guys and then I'll explain these a little bit better. And um, let's see. Good morning, Janet. Yay, you already started making your kit. Diane, hello. You guys were here before I even got on. Thank you. I do post in my VIP group when I'm going live, so you guys get on here before me. But then after I post that, I have to go grab my my microphone and get everything set up and clear the table because I take a picture of my projects for the, what's called a thumbnail, and then I have to clear the, clear the deck, <laughs> get set up all over again. So Cynthia... She loves, she loves to get her kits. It's, it is fun to get them. I'm sorry they were late, Yvonne. Yeah, they were really late this month, but they're usually not that late. They usually get sent out on the 10th of the month. or like, it, You could build on the 11th of the month or something. Get sent out maybe the 11th or 12th. But you have to subscribe by the 10th. Hello, Denise. All right. So, they, so Yvonne's saying they send the kits out that are furthest away first. I, did, I thought they did it by alphabetic order, but... I didn't know they sent it by geographical distance, but who knows? I think they just ran out when and it didn't, no rhyme or reason to it this time. Just, just the supply chain. Darlene, okay, and hello, Susan. Okay, it looks like matchbook, matchbooks. Okay, we have Janet, Susan, Beverly, matchbook, Denise, Be matchbook. Okay, we got all the votes for this. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to make these. But let me just show you these. So this one is just, um, I, I did these, the envelope liners for these. And I've shown these on my videos before. They're called sour cream containers. And I just put the um, either peanut M&Ms, jelly beans, something that makes a noise. That's what I was trying to show you. See that? Something that makes a noise. And I did make a little hole there in the top to put the ribbon through. And I used up the rest of my ribbon. All right, so now let's open a kit. In order to make it, so I, I used up everything. So we have to open up another kit to, see, to make these matchbooks because I have no more cards. I have no more of anything. So just get out your trimmer. And we'll, oh, and the box. We'll show you here. Show you. In the box is just um, making this out of a card. Here's the last project. This is a little box with chai tea, a couple Hershey miniatures, and a couple mini Mentos. So it's a box created with using one of the cards. And scoring three, I think it was three quarters of an inch on each side. It could have been three seven, seven eighths of an inch, but I think it was three quarters of an inch. All right, all right, I need this. All right, so we're going to open this up. Just to see, now, if you subscribe today, you're not getting this kit, although you're getting... The, hi, Lala. Okay, you're getting this kit. I mean, I'm sorry, you're not getting this kit if you subscribe today. You're allowed to get this as a, if, it, if we have refills available, but you're going to get the other kit. You're going to get the one called... You're going to get this one. Change is beautiful kit if you subscribe now by the 10th. You can, and so the only way to get these past kits is if they're available, only subscribers can get them. So here's what, so you get, every month you get one stamp and spot, different color every month, Misty Moonlight. And then here we got the Pale Papaya Ribbon. This is pretty cool ribbon. I really like it because it's not something that we sell. It's a color that we sell. But we don't sell this kind of ribbon. So I liked having ribbon that I don't normally have. I was like, that's pretty cool. It has little ridges on it. Come on. Come on, done. See? So they've got the... I'm just... This is kind of an unboxing for those of you who haven't unboxed your kit yet. Our free stamp set. The stamp set that, that I just used with hello and thanks and congratulations. And all that good stuff. And then you have your, your contents. And we get different colored tissue paper, different style boxes, which is nice. So what, what I'm showing you now is your typical contents of a kit. So next month, if the kit has nine cards, for example, you would you would get to see this many contents. Although it's not the exact contents, the whatever the... I always put in my newsletter what colors are coming up in the next kit and stuff like that. I forget the colors right now off the top of my head. But you get some, 
You get everything you need. It's an all-inclusive kit each month. You get the subdimensionals. These are the foam adhesives. You get all the bling. And you saw I used all the bling except for like maybe two. See, I used three on every project. And I made 21 projects. And I still had a couple left over. So that's how many bling you get. Pretty cool, right? You get the envelopes. Three of each. Okay. Three of each. And three of each. All right, and then you're gonna get you're gonna get these. So we'll make the containers out of these, and well, actually, we'll we'll probably make them out of this kind, and then the other one because this one's so pretty. We'll use this one for the front of a different card. So that's really pretty, right? The mountain scene, and it reminds me a lot of the New Horizons paper. So there's already a score in the card, in the cards, and so we're gonna take one of these and use it for our project. You get three of those nice watercolor backgrounds. And we'll take one of these and we'll use it as well. We'll make some containers out of these because it already has a cute little background. And so you get three of that style. And it's usually the way our kits are, three of each pattern. And then you get these, in this month we got these three pieces of embossed, but you saw what I did to them. I actually used my own sponge and I sponge colored them with some, with the sponge and the pale papaya. Hi Terry. And then you get these little things that you punch out, extra little embellishments and things, extra little pieces. And what I like to do is, if there's little humps on them from where they attached inside the kit, I like to take my scissors or a little nail file, and I like to like make sure I get the edges flattened out. All right, there you go, there you go. And what else? These are the, what I stamped the sentiments on. Here's what I stamped hello on. Yes, save the chipboard for your package. She said it makes, Yvonne's saying it makes good journals. I use this for my shipping and my kits because I'm always doing kits. And uh, the next kit I'm doing is Waves of Inspiration kit. I always have a workshop series. So I always put like, I save these to put in my envelopes so things don't get bent. So when I'm doing my, my paper pumpkin preparation, I punch out all these little embellishments and I have them all ready. And then, like I said, then I figure out what to do with it. So you could say, you can punch these out and then you can use these for stencils, see? So you could punch these all out while you're watching TV and then save this piece and use it as a sponge stencil if you want all these really cool pieces and so you get three sheets of those and that's what I used I didn't have to use any of the on beyond the horizon I mean the on the horizon but this is showing you though if you wanted to it's saying look it's saying do more with your kit and it's giving you alternate projects do more with this month's paper pumpkin kit and it gives you other ideas and of course that's what my videos are all about other ideas on what to do with the kit here's some glue dots and you already got your dimensionals. All right, so take your take your card and cut it in half. That's what we're going to do right now. We're going to take two of these at the same time, and we're going to make two of these. We're going to take two card bases, and we're going to cut it in half exactly. Now remember, cards are five. These are A2 cards, so they are five and a half. That's the size of an A2 card, five and a half. So when we cut them, when I say we're going to cut them in half, two and two point seven five, two and three quarters. Right? Two and three quarters is, is F. And I'll put it down. A, I'll go ahead and write that on the. So that's how you make your little containers or the little matchbooks. Okay, now we're going to write that. All right. Oh, do, 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 do. All right, well, well, first let's lop off the other end. And then I'll, I'll write some stuff down here for you. So now we're going we're gonna to take, I have to show you these because there's, there's a couple ways you can do it. So when you make these, you can take. Right? We want the, the longer end is going to be the plainer, the plain end. So we're going to chop this off a little bit. But the short, if you want, I did them that way too. So you can either what you can put the, so you can put the pattern in the back. I mean, it's it's up to you. So I'll probably do it both ways. I mean, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. But the bottom line is that you want them to be seven and a quarter long. Okay, seven and a quarter long. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the arm. I have this memorized because I make these so often. I'm just going to go ahead and lop off the edge. So we'll do it both ways. So just so you can see, it really doesn't matter. See what I mean? I'm going to turn one this way and one this way. Th just so you get an idea. So what matters is that the, the, it's seven and a quarter inches long. That's what matters. Seven and a quarter. It doesn't matter if I lop off this end or this end. It just makes, it just means you're going to decorate it differently. That's all. Okay. Seven and a quarter. 
All right, see, and there's already a natural score line, and we're going to be using that natural score line. We're using that score line that's already in there. That's part of what our project is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and these ones, it would matter because for these ones, I want the shorter end to be the end with the pattern, unlike these where I put the pattern on the back. So for these ones, since I want the shorter end to be the one with the pattern, I'm turning for this one, I'm turning the pattern end and I'm chopping off this side. So it's going to be still seven and a quarter, right? But I'm chopping off the side with the pattern. All right, for now, I'm going to write down the measurements and I'm going to grab what's called the Simply Scored. And we'll do our scoring. We could have scored with the scoring tool in there too. All right, so we have seven and a quarter. And I'm always saying 0.25 because I'm so used to work with my scan and cut, right? Times two and three quarters or 0.75. Okay, that's how long it is. So now we're going to lay it. So after you do that, you're going to have this shape here. And this is what we're going to be doing the scoring on. It's going to be laid out like that. So let me grab this. So we'll lay this here. And we'll show you where the score marks are. So you're going to put this down. And notice that you already have one score. You already have one of the score marks that you need right here. Let's see. Three. Let's see. Well, let's do this side first. Four. Mm, let me just see if any of them have it. It's like two. It's supposed to be like two and seven eighths and four. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. It's two and seven eighths and then three and an eighth is what it is. But let me just go ahead and turn it this way. All right. We'll just do it over here. So we're going to say, so first you're going to score it at uh, three, three quarters of an inch over here. Okay. So let's do all those. Okay. I'm just making sure I'm doing this right. So three quarters of an inch. I'm just folding it all down. Yeah. Okay. Like that. Now that would be, that would be all you had to do really three quarters, but we're going to do the little top part. Okay. So you're going to do three quarters of an inch and then Technically, it's really like three, it's really supposed to be 3.78 and then four and an eighth, but I already had an extra little mark there, so it's okay. So we're just going to go like that. Okay. So I'll go ahead and write it down. Don't worry that there's a natural score line there. It's okay. Do, do, do. So we're going to say, you're going to score it at three, it, here, da, 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 da. three quarters of an inch, right? And then you're going to go up to here, you're going to say three, here, three and seven eighths of an inch. And then you're going to score it again at four and an eighth. So you basically just have this little, this little part at the top. Okay, and my score marks were there, they were there before, so I'm not really sure what happened. Anyway, mo one of the score marks I didn't even have to make, because it was already there. Maybe because I did it a little, little bit different. I'm just going to, I'm just going to like fold it naturally and see. Maybe I did it a little bit. No, that was still three and seven eighths. Anyway, just talking, just thinking out loud. Three, seven, five, four. Three and seven eighths and four and an eighth. All right. And don't worry, I get that extra little fold there. Now, of course, you, you could just use cardstock in the first place, right? Doesn't matter. But I'm just using the card that was already there. Okay, let's do it again. Three, seven, five. Three and seven eighths. Four and an eighth. And one more. All right, so there's your measurements. And then you're just going to take it and you're just going to kind of get, get it like that. 
pull that out, pull that back out, staple. And tuck. And then you can put your Ghirardelli in there and you can put your tea bag in there. And what I did is I put a little dimensional back there to hold it in place. And of course I decorated it with a little extra piece there. We'll see if we can't use the punch. Anyway, just folding. Okay, this one, with this one I ended up, that pattern will be in the back for that one. It's all good. Then you just decorate the front some more. And of course, if you have an extra little fold there, you can make it thicker. Maybe you want to use it, maybe you want to put sticky notes in there. Or something else. Little, you can make these different sizes if you want to put other things inside them. Okay, so let's grab some, let's get a piece of the envelope. Okay, and we'll do a little stamp on there with the stamp set I already have open, not the one, not a new one. And we'll use the Misty Moonlight. This is the new stamp. I don't want to use the brand new stamp. But maybe I already have it there. <laughs> when I think out loud, you can follow my process back. Well, that was me thinking out loud. No, when I did it, when I was sitting there watching TV, honestly, I didn't have to actually make one of the score marks that was already there. But maybe because I had them turned around the other way. That's all I was saying. It doesn't really matter if you make an extra score mark because all it, it just means, see, earlier I didn't have an extra score mark. It went like there and there. Right? But this time I have that extra little score mark, but that's probably because I had them turned backwards. But it doesn't really matter. I did it both ways. That's why I say, yeah, I do, I do speak out loud. It's kind of like that's the way I think, that's the way I craft. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your stamp, and let's take, let's take the one that says thanks. All right, and we're going we're gonna to use Misty Moonlight. We're going to stamp it. So you're just going to mount... To put your stamp flat, I'm just going to put it in an angle. Now, you're probably wondering, well, doesn't it come with a stamp pad? No, it doesn't come. The first time you subscribe, your free gift from Stampin' Up! is a stamping block. Not this style, but a little bit flatter. And so the first time, you will get that stamping block. And then later... I'm just pulling my envelope apart, so... You're going to use that stamping block all the time unless you have other stamping blocks from Stampin' Up. Okay, so I'm just getting that little thanks there. It fit on this double oval punch, and we'll put the background. We'll do one of those for the background. Actually, I just used, you know, I used... I think it was Knight of Navy, like a cardstock in the background, but you get the idea. I'm just trying to show you start to finish. That's how, just so I'm not leaving anything out. I just took my little scraps of paper. We're not going to start with all the all that part. I'm just showing it da, 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 like that. And so you have that little layer, and you can make put your put that on there. But of course, you could use a couple extra little pieces. Let's see what I have in my bucket of crafty goodness, so I don't have to start all over. I have a lot of extra. See, not only that, like, not only did I make all those cards, the 21 projects, but look how many pieces I still have left over from the first kit. And then I just opened a second kit. But I'm just see if I can find something to put on there. So here, this one would be cute. So we'll put that across there. Yeah, I totally make up everything as I go along. I had no plan for this kit. I just started making, creating with it. I find it's easier than trying to measure. You'll never measure it the right way. So I just try, I think it's easier just to kind of overlap it a little bit. And then here's a piece of, uh... so for these little pieces, you want to use glue because it's like they're tiny, a tiny row. I 
I'm not going to make all four of them. I'm just making one, but you're going to see how I did all four. By, by me making one, you're going to see how I did all four. Okay, and then you just, I'm going to use a little piece. So what I did for the bottom part to cover up the staples is I just took a little scrap. Right, so tuck that under. And then you're going to put a little scrap, that, so you're going to put glue on that part. And then you just cover up your staples that way. Do, do, do. You don't have to cover up your staples. That was just a new thing I've just started doing. I've started covering up my staples. And then we'll put the little bit. And put that over that side. And some bling from our new kit. That was probably the first thing that came out of the kit, the bling. Here it is, it's right down here. I'm just waiting for that little bar to dry at the bottom. So we'll put a big one down here, top of there. And you got your odd number, put your tea bag in there. Just put these in with your little care packages or whatever you do. Coworkers and everything. It's very quick and easy to make. So there you go. And you can put other stuff in there. Money. Make it a little bigger. Put a gift card in there. All right. So in, in the past, I've done, I'm just going to, you know, I could just tell you the, the measurements for this one. In the past, I've done these boxes online a lot of times with you guys. So let's just see how I scored it. Three quarters. My box was just the top of a card and the bottom of the card. And I scored the box three quarters of an inches around the side so you can make yourself a little box. And then for this one, for the sour cream container, I just used a piece of envelope liner. Simple, super simple. I just used this part of the envelope liner, the inside right here. And that's, that's the size I started with, that little rectangle. And I just kind of folded it around and adhered it and put a little ribbon on it. So you can you have lots of different options for your project. So I hope you enjoyed this overview of 21 things you can create using this month's paper pumpkin kit. Quickly going through those and we're going to... So now Linda's loving this kit. I'm glad that you are too, Linda. Yeah, I love it. So Susan... Yeah, cut up the envelopes, guys. You can get other envelopes that... They're going to get all beat up in the mail. You might as well make the envelopes into cards, right? That's what I think, too. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Diane from Kentucky. All right, so that's it. So I got to show you 21 projects I created using this month's paper pumpkin kit. I hope you enjoyed all my alternative projects and a few I created just like with the ones that were there. I'll try to take separate photos of all these. And I will be doing something with the... I'm going to actually do something with the alternative set, maybe. And I definitely want to do something where I t incorporate the On the Horizons, On the Horizon suite of products, especially the designer series paper with all of these kinds of projects. But for now, everything I'm showing you, you don't have to worry about, can I do this? You can do everything I'm showing you tonight because with just the contents of the kit because I really didn't use anything but the contents of the kit. For all these projects except for a little extra card stock and some punches but you could do all this stuff on your own that's all for now this is the paper chef have a great day